Who is your customer? I'm not asking who the company you're calling is or who the leads are in your CRM. I'm asking which of the people inside those leads or companies have the power to approve you and which have the authority to send you actual business. The decision makers that you need to speak with that have the authority to purchase what you're selling. I think you'll be surprised, so stick with us through the end of the video for a bonus tip on uncovering who your customers really are. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation sales tips and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're a fan of the content, please support us by crushing that like button and sharing us with all of your colleagues. And for more info on our freight brokerage course, Freight Broker Basics, click the link in the show notes or go to our website, freight360.net, also for more free training material. Most of the emphasis in sales is on choosing the leads you contact and the amount of calls you make on any given day or week. And granted, those two are really both of the most important tasks in being successful as a freight brokerage or a freight broker, right? But they are only part of the story. Actually, they're more like the cover of the book to the story, right? Yes, it's important that you choose a good book in the library before you read it, but the special sauce and the real value is what's inside that book. So, just like the old saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover, don't judge a prospect just by their sales or their websites. You'll want to dig a little deeper to determine if there's value in working with that prospective shipper. And that requires you to know where to look and who to look for. So let's start with how decisions are actually made behind the scenes of a shipper. There are two major categories in logistics department. The first is procurement, and they are the first in the process because without the green light or approval of procurement, you usually cannot actually do business with this organization or company. And most mid-sized to larger companies have a dedicated department that is responsible for all of the purchases that company makes. From the toilet paper supplier all the way to the raw materials they purchase to manufacture their products. This is usually, they usually have predetermined criteria that each of these departments has come up with over the years that they've been in business. And the criteria is applied to the approval of each vendor. Price is always one of those criteria, but it's not always the most important. You also have insurance requirements, fleet sizes. Are you a brokerage? Are you an asset-based company? How many years have you been in business are some of the most common. Now, the two that usually hold the most importance are service and price. And depending on the market we're in, it will usually be, usually be weighted in favor of one more than the other, but never only one and never only the other, okay? In a tight market where it's difficult to find a carrier, it will be service over price. And when it's a loose market, it's usually price over service, since the company can usually secure trucks whenever they need them. That makes sense? Now, the titles of these people will usually include the word procurement, but not always. It can also be the same person that has other responsibilities, and this is usually the case in much smaller companies. So, you'll usually have to do some research or detective work on your first few calls to really to determine how their carrier or vendor approval works at that company. These are also great questions to ask a gatekeeper because they'll usually be able to give you enough general info to figure out who these folks are and what the process really entails. Now for the second category. And this one, even though it's technically second, is often more important. These are the folks or people responsible for tendering or actually arranging the loads. These people are usually the lower levels in the company's hierarchy meaning they tend to be more of the entry-level logistics employees. The, what they're doing is they're learning all of the company's shipping lanes, they're learning about the carrier base, and they're learning it from a very personal point of view. They usually value the things that are currently important also to their senior managers and are usually in line with the procurement's current needs and requirements. Why this is important is that the individual tendering the freight usually cares more about price and service than upper management. 
The reason for that is because that's usually the way their incentives and bonuses are paid out for those positions. If they go over budget, paying carriers or brokers too often, like when they have to pay a broker to pick up a load that the carrier they chose rejected, they get a penalty. Stay under budget and keep their loads picked up on time and they're rewarded, bonuses or incentives. They're also often the first group of people that get the blame when a carrier or a broker misses a pickup. It'll go something like this. The customer who the load was supposed to be delivered to will call the salesperson that they ordered that load from and they'll complain that the shipment didn't arrive on time. Then the salesperson calls the person responsible for tendering the loads and gives them the same harsh feedback they just got from the customer, right? So you'll see in that structure that the person you are speaking to and the job they have will greatly determine if you have a profitable customer or relationship in this lead. The procurement department opens the door, but isn't usually responsible for making sure you actually have any loads to move. While the individual that tenders the freight cannot usually approve you to be on the carrier list, they are responsible for the amount of business you receive the margins associated with each of those loads you might ship. So the lesson here is that before you begin to sell all of your services as a freight broker or an asset carrier, spend a few minutes researching the titles within that company before you pick up the phone. Take notes in your CRM as to the likely people that are either in procurement and which are actually tendering the freight. Make sure that you are speaking to each in a way that relates to each of their personal positions and their individual motivations for working with your company. They're usually aligned, but not exactly the same. Remember, the folks tendering the freight are usually more sensitive to the struggles and real life issues in our industry and are usually easier to relate to, where procurement is usually more concerned with keeping the number of actual carriers or freight brokers their vendors as low as possible while still maintaining optimal service and fair pricing within their shipping. As promised, a pro tip. If you hadn't had much luck lately getting approved with many companies, work this process backwards. Start with the lowest level title that you can find in LinkedIn for your prospect. Then ask them lots of questions to understand what's going on currently in their business. General questions. How are things going? How's your year coming along? And then you can move to some more important questions and ask a little bit about how their onboarding process or their procurement department actually functions and what the best way to proceed might be. And if you establish enough trust and create some friendships with those newer and usually younger employees, they'll often tell you exactly what you need to know and who to contact to get approved in the future. If you'd like to start your own brokerage and need more info, please check out our course, Freight Broker Basics, available through the links in the show notes or at our website, freight360.net. And remember, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right.